so let's just hop right into the content. So um, look, here's what we know about working remote or co-working remote. We're seeing lots and lots of folks um, that are still working from home. We see a work style that we call hybrid, where some folks are at home, some folks are, um, are back in the office. But we're seeing kind of five things that are impacting people's work style. First is there's just a general lack of face-to-face -face interaction. It's definitely impacted how we communicate. I read a great article uh, a couple of weeks back that talked about how these video conferencing solutions actually mess with our heads. While we can certainly see people spatially, um, our brain is not able to, uh, to process as well what they are saying. Um, also, over half of communication is delivered through um, uh, through body language. And so while you can kind of read body language over video, you definitely can't read body language over chats, over text messages, over email. So that lack of face-to-face -face interaction um, impacts things like what actually needs to get done, who's going to do it, when does it need to get done by. Uh, we find that there's just an overall lack of access to information as well. Um, if you were a more forward-thinking organization and you'd already moved everything off of on-premises service servers, um, you found that that lack of face-to-face -face interaction often meant that you're missing tidbits of information that you may pick up in hallway conversations. If you hadn't yet moved everything to the cloud, that lack of access information lack of access to information has only been exacerbated. Really difficult for folks that are outside of the office to be able to get the information that they need. Uh, we know assignments are pouring in faster and faster than most people can keep up, keep up with. Um, and they're coming from lots of different places. Outlook, text messages, Teams meetings, Teams messages, Slack channels. It, it's just a lot to juggle. Uh, we are coupling that with the fact that in a lot of cases, many of you are playing the role of gym teacher, principal, guidance counselor, uh, teacher, uh, parent, dog walker, <laughs> partner, caretaker. It's just there are a lot of distractions that are going on at home. Uh, and that means you're constantly juggling those tasks and projects against both your personal and professional goals. Uh, and it's just it's a lot to keep up with. And then when we couple that with Parkinson's law, if you're familiar with it, it basically says work will always expand so as to fill the time available for its completion. And so we find there are really two types of people in the world. There are those who know what their deadline is and they knock those tasks out early in the process, um, but they're probably going to use just the last little bit of time to that task deadline to be able to wrap up those final items. So if you give them a three-day task, they're probably going to take three days to do it. Most of that work is going to be front-loaded. Alternatively, there is the second type of person that if you give them a three-day task, they're probably going to wait two days before they even get started. I, unfortunately, I know I'm more of that latter type of person um, where I work better under pressure, um, but I'm really trying to become more of that first type of person where, I, where I'm getting more of my tasks done earlier in the deadlines. Um, so one of the things that we talk about is uh, do you use a paper planner or an electronic planner, which is kind of funny. Um, I know what we always have our phones with us, so it's easy for us to think about maybe electronic planner is the way to go. I think it's a left brain, right brain kind of discussion. Um, I actually use a paper planner uh, to plan my week out. Uh, I find that when I write things down, I, I tend to recall them better. Um, I'm also able to better plan when I write things down. Um, now, I do use an electronic planner as well. I use Microsoft Outlook primarily uh, from a calendaring perspective, obviously, and then a couple of tools we'll talk about today. So I find that the two actually work hand in hand. Um, this process allows me to focus on the big things on my paper planner and then kind of fill in those what I'll call tactical items in the electronic planner. And so the one that I use actually is called the full focus planner by Michael Hyatt. It uses a four step process. I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but basically you have your quarterly plan. What are your what are your big goals? What are your big plans for the quarter? Um, uh, and so it, basically I use four paper planners per per year, all from the same uh, from the same organization against the Michael Hyatt. You can just Google it 
full focus planner, but it helps me plan out what are the big things I want to get done this year, and then what are the big things I want to get done this quarter to support those annual goals. And then weekly, I review how did I do on my goals last week? What are the things that I've got to get done? And then we have the big three for the week. I'll talk about that more here in just a second. And then that breaks it down even further into daily goals. Um, so daily goals, daily daily plan, where I'm actually writing my schedule down. I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots of what the planner actually looks like. Um, I plan out each day of the week on a Sunday. So Sunday, I'm reviewing my big three from the previous week uh, and my big three coming up for the for the coming week and each day through the following Sunday. And, and that's where some of the electronic stuff comes in. When I sit down, I pull my paper planner out. I pull my phone out or pull my laptop out and I, I'm reviewing my task from both in tandem and it helps me better plan my week. Um, and then at, at the end of the quarter, you actually will do your quarterly review at the end of the at the end of the use of the paper planner and you just see how did I do and now what am I planning? So this is actually what it looks like if you're interested. Again, I find writing things down really helps. Um, you will set your goals in the paper planner. You have your achievement goals. Uh, so for example, I want to lose 15 pounds or I want to learn 300 words in Spanish. Um, and then you also have your habit goals and your habit goals are things more like I want to uh, work out three times per week. So you're going to define those things out. What are your key motivations? And there's some psychology, I think, uh, behind this around understanding the why. Um, and your why is going to be different than anybody else's. You'll see this is now the weekly preview. I talked about that a bit earlier um, that what, excuse me, breaks out what you are going to be focused on on a week by week basis and how you did on the previous week. And then here's your daily agenda. So your big three for, for that day. Um, obviously, only limiting to three, I think, helps me make sure that I'm focused on the right things to, to achieve for that day. That's going to support my weekly goals that are in turn going to support my quarterly goals. I take that paper planner with me almost everywhere I go when I'm at work. I don't take it with me everywhere I go on the weekends or in the evening. Uh, the good thing about that is it allows me in a meeting, for example, to take notes uh, and also write down uh, tasks and to-dos, um, take, uh, takeaways, things like that. You can uh, mark those, as you can see in that slide there, important questions to do or delegate. And I use that at the end of each week to help me sweep through any of the items that did not get done. OK, so that's how I use a paper planner. Again, I'm not saying it's necessarily right or wrong. I've just found that it works really well for me. I've been using this system for about a year and a half. Uh, we actually have a number of folks in our organization who are using the exact same system and it, it, it works pretty well. I'm just going to pause for just a second, check the Q&A and see if there's any questions that have come in. And it looks like so far so good. Good. Perfect. So, all right. So moving right along. Um, now we're going to talk about, well, where does an electronic planner really fit into it? And how can we do this inside uh, Microsoft 365? Um, I think it's important to first to understand what are the tools that you have available to you? Um, everything that I'm going to show you today is 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 possible cross platform, meaning whether you're a Mac user, a Windows user, an Android user, or an iOS user, um, you can use these basic tenets to get things done. I'm going to show you uh, things that are only available today, but there are things that are coming. Uh, for example, some of you may already have it. We already have it in our tenant um, that. Um, that are coming down the pipe from a development perspective. I'm going to show you one, exa one example of that, but pretty much everything I'm going to show you today is possible today. Uh, the intent here is not to necessarily show you what's right or wrong, but really more to help you understand what is possible. Uh, so we're going to be using Microsoft To Do, Microsoft Planner, and then I sprinkle a little bit of what's called Power Automate or Flow. Uh, to help kind of manage um, some of the things that are coming out to me on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis, basis. Excuse me, I can't talk this morning. Um, for the purposes of our discussion today, I'm going to kind of assume that you already have a baseline understanding of Microsoft 365, uh, Microsoft To Do, and Microsoft Planner. 
Uh, if you'd like for us to do a deeper dive on any of these products, certainly let us know in the chat. Brendan can put that on the schedule. Uh, we're planning the rest of uh, the remainder of this year's schedule and next year's schedule out for this type of content as well. So what do you use when? So Microsoft To Do is really your personal to-do list. Um, it helps you manage your individual tasks across To Do, Outlook, and Planner. So actually it is integrated with Microsoft Planner. I'm going to show you that. It has what we call intelligent list. Um, meaning that if I flag an email, it can actually show up in to do. Uh, it'll pull in planner tasks and it actually helps me keep track of things maybe that I didn't get done that I need to get done. You can make your daily to do list or your uh, custom list. I'll show you how to do that. And then you can share lists with teammates or with partners. So, for example, if you're if you want to have a personal list of a shopping list, for example, you could certainly do that in to do and share that with a member of your family. So that left hand column is really more of kind of what am I doing as an individual? Uh, and then the right hand column, Microsoft Planner, is really more of a lightweight project management system. So it's not going to be full fledged project. We hear people ask all the time, when is it going to have things like Gantt charts and that type of stuff? When is it going to have dependencies? I, I kind of doubt we'll ever see that in Microsoft Planner because it would poach essentially some of the functionality from a project, which is Microsoft's you know, top of the line project management system. You are allowed to, uh, you basically use that Kanban or Kanban, depending upon whether or not you're, or whether or not you're from South Carolina. Um, it, it helps you track and bucketize work and visualize where the work is. And we're going to walk through that here in just a moment. I'll tell you what's coming. What's coming, uh, and some of you may have already seen this, What's coming is uh, tasks in Teams. So you will soon be able to manage your um, personal task and your planner task all within a Teams uh, pane of glass. So it's not here yet. It is coming, uh, slated for October release broadly, certainly by the end of the year for everyone. Uh, again, we already have a handful of customers that's, that um, uh, that are seeing this in their tenant. We're seeing it in ours. And uh, it's super powerful from my perspective. It, it helps me just see where everything is all in a single pane of glass. And it feels like we're all living in teams today anyway. So that's coming. Just know that's coming. We're, we're not going to um, we're not going to go deep in that today other than what you've seen. When it's more broadly available, we may do a deeper dive into that for everyone. Um, so the scenarios for today, uh, we're going to talk about how to manage your task in Outlook using Microsoft To Do, using Microsoft Planner, and then how do you leverage Power Automate in Microsoft Teams uh, to help streamline some of these processes. So now let's just walk through some demos. So again, I want to stress this is not necessarily the right or the wrong way to do things. This is just the way I manage my task um, in Microsoft 365 today. So I'm going to take a quick sip of water and check the Q&A real quick and just see if we've got any questions that have not yet been answered. I think we're OK. Brendan, um, questions good? Everybody, oh, everybody OK there? All good, yes. If you do have a question, please put it in there and we will respond to that as in the order they come in. Thanks. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Brendan. All right, well, let's get started. So. Um, I actually, I'm an older person. I'm 43. Um, uh, I know um, that's really not old, but but in the technology world, at least I'm telling myself that it's not old. In the technology world, it, it, um, it I'm come more from the rich client world, meaning I had a physical piece of software installed on my PC. Um, I found that over the past year, I've transitioned more to more of the web-based apps, even for Office. Now, I primarily use the Outlook online app. Uh, I actually use the PWA, what's called the PWA, the Progressive Web App. Um, it's fairly simple to use, um, but anything that I'm going to show you today, you could certainly do in the rich client on your machine as well. Now, I'm logged in as a demo user. Obviously, um, I can't show you my live email because you would all judge me with the number of uh, unread, unread items in my inbox. Um, but I'm logged in here and, and this mimics exactly the type of work that I do every day. Um, so I'm logged in right now into portal.office.com. I'm just going to hop straight over to my email. And what you're going to see here is um, uh, just my, 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 my inbox. And again, should be fairly 
used to seeing this style of view. Um, in the rich client, you can peek what I'm about to do, what's called a peek, where you can peek your calendar and your task item over in the right hand corner. If you don't know how to do that, you could certainly just ask a member of our team or just Google doc the peak um, and, um, and it'll dock out what you're what you're about to see here. I'm just going to click this little button up here in the upper right hand corner. It's the my day button. And what this does is it actually shows similar to what you would see in the rich client, what I have got to do today. So this shows my calendar and it also shows my to do items. So this is coming from Microsoft to do is where this is actually coming from. Um, so you'll see both my calendar items as well as my um, as my um, to do items. I can cycle this calendar out. So if I just wanted to move back a day, uh, move, move out a day, it's very easy to do and my calendar stays real. So I can always see what's going on. If I'm on the phone with somebody, I need to check something. And I can also show multiple calendars. So if I click this show all, I can pull in other calendars from, uh, from Planner or from Microsoft 365 Groups. So if you're using Groups, you know that you have a shared calendar function. So if I pop this in, it'll layer over any items that I have uh, that are coming in from those other calendars. So just know that you've got the ability to do that. And again, you can do the same thing in the rich client. From an agenda perspective, you can pop this over to the agenda and this includes both your task for today as well as the items that uh, are on your calendar for today. And again, I can scroll that out just like normal, just by simply scrolling up and down. So I highly encourage you to do that. It helps you kind of bring everything together into this single pane of glass for both your calendar and your to-do items. Now, inside Outlook, there's a couple of ways we can, we can triage email that comes in. So if I go down here and I grab this email from Adele, I'm just going to drag it and drop it. And you'll notice what happens on the right hand side is this window changes. Again, you can do the same thing in Outlook, uh, rich client. You drag and drop into the into the dock. So if I wanted to turn this into a calendar event, I would just drop into right here to add as an event. Or if I wanted to create a to do off of this for me personally, I could click this uh, and drop it right into add a task, which is what I just did. So I just dragged and dropped this email from Adele right into task and now that is listed as a to do now what i love about this is it keeps the context real so you can see here i've got this little email button this little email envelope here in the window if i click that it'll actually open that email up and i realize okay this was the to do that needed to get done i love that because it just helps you again manage individual emails um, and always keep that task in context now you'll see this little carrot here. Um, these are my list that are coming over from Microsoft to do. We'll dig into that here in just a minute. Um, so if I wanted to swap between these lists, for example, and go to Teams follow-up, Teams follow-ups, I could swap that view here just by clicking that little carrot, okay? Now I've also set up, and uh, this works by default, you just have to go into Microsoft To Do and, and when you do it the first time, it'll give you the option. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. So that anytime I flag a message, it will automatically create a To Do for me. So if I click this You Have Late Task and I flag that message, it's going to turn that into a To Do in my flagged email. So you can see You Have Late Task, you have late tasks. So I've turned these emails into to-dos that will show up. Um, what's interesting about this is keep in mind this will only this will only keep your messages in your to-dos for 30 for 30 days. So Microsoft assumes that or Microsoft to do assumes that if you haven't done it in 30 days, you're probably not going to get it done. So if it's something you need to get done 30 days later, um, you would just simply either need to put that on your calendar or change the due date out to more than 30 days. Because by default, when we open when we open these to dos up here, as you'll see in just a minute, these won't have due dates on them. Okay, so if I click these off, they're actually going to click off now, and you'll see that they are shown as completed in my inbox here as well. Now, what's super cool about this, and I'm not going to demo this um, 
uh, from a mobile perspective, it works on mobile as well. So if you're using Outlook, the Outlook app on mobile, um, if you swipe your messages, you can swipe left or swipe right. You just set those settings. I mine is set to when I swipe right, it flags the message. So when I'm mobile, if I've got a task that I need to follow up on or an email I need to follow up on, I can right click that and um, excuse me, I can right swipe that and it'll show up in my to do items. OK, so that's a pretty simple way to um, uh, to triage your mail and I use that fairly frequently throughout the day. Now I am using a flow. Um, a flow is just a workflow that I've built that says that anytime I'm at mentioned in a message, I want you to automatically create a to do for me. So you can see here, uh, Adele has at mentioned me, I'm Alex Wilbur, uh, that I have a follow up item. So because she at mentioned me, Flow actually was running in the background and it turned that into a follow up task for me. Um, some of you may not be using at mentions, but at mentions are a great way inside Microsoft Word or in PowerPoint or Excel or Teams or Outlook to basically call out an individual or multiple people. So I've turned on a flow and we'll get you a list um, as a follow up of all the flows that you can turn on. Um, uh, all of these are out of the box. None of these are special built, but you could certainly build your own if you chose to. OK, so that's just a, a flow that runs anytime somebody at mentions me in my um, in my email. So now we're going to hop over to Microsoft to do. And uh, again, you've got a you've got this by default in any plan Microsoft 365 basic or higher. So you have planner and to do in any Microsoft 365 basic or higher plan. Um, I'm showing you the web app. There is a Windows 10 app that you can install. There's an iOS app. There's an Android app and there is a Mac app that you could use. Again, I, on my desktop, I primarily use the Windows 10 app, but for the purposes of our demo today, I'm simply just showing you the um, the web version. So my day currently is empty. So we have a couple of of uh, smart lists that you'll see that just happen out of the box. That's going to be my day important planned, assigned to you, and task. Task is kind of your catch-all list. Um, if and you go- Reed, we have a quick question before shoot. we get go further. Is Flow included in Office 365 or is there an additional charge? Perfect. Um, so any Flow that runs against your Microsoft 365 tenant is included. So um, it, there's some licensing kind of gotchas that you need to be aware of. Um, that we could certainly dive deeper on, reach out to your um, to your account, to your account manager. But e everything that I'm going to show you today is free. Uh, if you want to use Flow with third-party applications, um, there is there are licensing uh, ramifications there that you just need to be aware of. So thanks for the question. Um, okay, so um, these are what we call your smart list, meaning they're created for you automatically. If you don't see the flagged email op option, you just need to turn that on. That's done in your settings. Um, I, I'm not going to go through that in our demo today, but it's a fairly straightforward process. Just use your cog. Uh, you can also go through the settings on um, on the iOS or Android app. Um, note that as well, the first time you open to do, it actually should ask you, hey, do you want to automatically turn flagged emails into um, smart list? And you'll just toggle that on. I've created a custom list here called Teams Follow Up, but you can create new lists as well. So if I just want to create one called Groceries, I could do that and that will sync across all my devices. Uh, I forgot to press enter. Can't spell today. So pretty easy to do uh, just to create a custom list and you can share those lists as well just by clicking that share button. So let's go back and look at my day. Now this is what I love is that um, my day is smart. So things that I have missed will automatically surface up and things that, um, that to do knows are coming up, it will also uh, um, uh, service up. So you could say, hey, it's making a suggestion here that says, hey, here's some items that you may want to add to your day. Now you'll notice here 
right underneath each one, it shows you the list that it's coming from, right? Um, and then also from the plan that it might be coming from. So this is actually coming from Microsoft Planner. And then it shows me anything I missed. So I missed three things that were supposed to happen yesterday. So if I press the plus button on each of those, it'll actually drop them into my day. The blue means that it's a personal task for me and Microsoft uh, to do. The green means that's a task that's coming over from Planner. So I love the Today Smart List because it helps me keep up with the things that I might have missed earlier. Um, and you can see just that um, uh, that I'm in this My Day here. Now, from a task importance perspective, anything you star is going to automatically show up in your important list. So you can see here, I just starred this check specs against plan, and now that's going to show up in my important list. Planned items are items that are actually planned out and have a defined due date. Those might come from to do or they might come from Microsoft Planner. So I can at a quick glance see I've got a couple items that are due today, a couple items that are due tomorrow, some items that are due next week and then later on uh, in the year. Assigned to you also will come from Planner. We'll get into Planner here in just a minute. And then here's all your flagged email. So again, anything that I have uh, flagged off. And again, remember, if I open this item up, uh, when I click open in Outlook, it will open that email up. Sorry, my windows are going crazy here. It'll open that email up for me. And I can actually see it in context. Now, when we get into each individual task, you have this flyout that happens on the right hand side. So if I wanted to add this to my day, I could just very simply click this, set a reminder. So remind me on a specific time of day or day of the week when this item might be specifically due. If it's something that happens every week, like read, a, read an article or re, uh, send out a reminder email, you could set that repeat. And you can also set personal categories. Um, uh, now, I'm not going to go into labels necessarily uh, in today's demo, but if you've got, so for example, finance things or uh, um, leadership team items, you could certainly categorize this. I find that I don't do those because categories change based on whether it's an Outlook or a Planner app, and it's, I just find it kind of confusing, but I know a lot of folks do that. And you can also add attachments as well. So um, just click that Add File button. Here's my lovely family in Mexico. So let's just put a picture of me and my wife here. And now I've added in a file um, that'll be available to me across all of my devices. So you could put Word documents, Excel documents, whatever the case may be. Now remember, all of that is going to follow you across all of your devices, okay? Now I've created this item down here called Teams Follow-Ups. And you're gonna see four items that, that are showing up here in a minute. I'm going to walk you through how these actually showed up here. These are tasks that I created for myself directly out of Microsoft Teams. So just keep that in mind because we're going to walk through that here in just a minute. All right, I'm going to take another quick sip of water. And we're going to hop over to Planner. So Planner is the lightweight project management application um, built on Microsoft 365 groups. Um, and as you know, as you should know, Microsoft Teams are built off of Microsoft 365 groups. So we've got a great infographic if you're interested in finding it or seeing it on uh, how groups and teams work together. Um, uh, that's kind of a foundational thing that you need just to understand. But essentially, uh, Planner brings together everyone that's in a group uh, around a specific plan and a plan you can have multiple plans per group okay again we're not going into the deep dive on planner here because you could spend a whole hour here but when you go to task.office.com or when you use your app launcher you can pick it from your app launcher and there is also a uh, android and ios app that you can install you'll always default here to this planner hub this is going to show you um, by default, the plans that you have favorited, I favorited these two plans. If I click all plans, this will show me all the plans that I currently have access to. If I wanted to add the event plan as a favorite, I just click that star and it's going to show up in my favorite plans. 
What's cool about this is again, it follows you across all of your devices. So you'll see your favorite plans in your mobile device of choice as well. Okay. So we're primarily going to be working in the Mark 8 project plan here. Um, and this is a plan that is associated with a Microsoft team. I'll show you more about that here in just a second. We've created three buckets, engineering, manufacturing, or launch and launch. You could have as many buckets here as you choose. So if I wanted to add a fourth bucket and call it marketing, I could add that fourth bucket and call it marketing. It just helps you better visualize your work. You can drag and drop your items between buckets as well. We'll walk through that here in just a second. So you could think through, you know, there's multiple um, multiple ways you can think through what might be how we bucketize work. Uh, you can rename entire buckets, delete buckets, move them left and right. So if I wanted to move manufacturing over to the right, I just click that and it would move over accordingly. Over here, you can see everybody that is active in this plan. Um, again, powered off of Microsoft 365 groups. If I drop this down, I can actually see everybody's name that's that's involved. You can build filters that say, okay, show me everything that is due today. And that's going to change out what you're seeing in the plan. If you use labels as well, you could say, show me everything that is engineering that is due today. And that'll help you uh, pare down the work that is currently assigned. Uh, I'm going to clear those buckets out. You'll see across the top here, you've got a couple of options here. This chart is just another way to potentially visualize your work, um, amount of tasks per bucket, the priority, um, who's got the most work. So you can see Alex here is carrying the vast majority of the work. He's got one item that's late. You see that because it's in red. Uh, Christy's got one item. I think that's going to be due today. Um, and if you click on those, it'll actually change what you're seeing in the right hand side, right? If I click on any of these, it will change based on what is going on. So basically right there, looking here, is going to drive what you see in that right-hand pane. The schedule shows you a visualization of everything that needs to happen from a work perspective. And you can do that by week or by month. Um, so again, this shows I've got an item here that's past due. Let's just move that out. I'm going to drag and drop that out and change the due date to Thursday. If you click this little ellipse button here, um, this shows you everything else that's available. Um, this is all the power of Microsoft 365 groups. So anytime you create a group, by default, you're creating a shared file storage notebook uh, and a SharePoint site. Again, not going to go into the details on that, but um, know that that option certainly exists. OK, so let's just go back and we're going to create a new task. and you can create them very, very uh, quick, uh, very, very quickly. This is one of the things I don't like about Planner is it it can be a bit clicky, meaning that if I want to add detail in, I, there's no easy way to do it outside of just putting the task in first. So let's just put one in and call it set marketing milestones. I'm going to set a due date of that to Friday and I'm going to put Adele and myself, Alex, as the folks that are responsible for doing that. Now they're going to get emails that tell them they have been assigned. I'm going to click add task and now that task is in. So now if I want to put some more context to that though, I have to actually double click and open the card up. I don't really like that. It kind of bothers me just, just a bit. Um, but now inside the card, what you can do is add labels. We've got a handful here. Uh, you get six, but we can add another one in. Now we're going to call this one marketing team. So you can label any of your uh, any of your task. So marketing team, we're going to add that label in. You can have multiple labels as well. This is the bucket that it's going to live in. So I could move move it. It can only live in one bucket at a time. How are we tracking? Or is it in progress? Is it completed? When's it start and when's it due? Now I put my due date in already. We're not going to worry about the start time. You can put checklist items in. So if there's specific steps that need to get done, you could certainly add those in. So create plan and publish plan. And you can move those items up or down. OK, so now that we've done this and I've chose this show on card, my checklist items are going to show on the card itself. I can add multiple attachments. We actually use this to prep for this demo. 
um, we pulled in various re various resources and added them as attachments so we could go back and view those later. File is going to pull an item from a local from your local machine. Link allows you to drop in like a YouTube video uh, or a web or a web page. And SharePoint is actually going to pull all of the documents that live inside this Office 365 group. So if I go down here and I pop in this PowerPoint and just hit save and click show on card, it's actually going to uh, show the PowerPoint on the card, the file, the thumbnail, um, uh, right there on the card. Now you can only show one thing on the card at a time. So if you'll notice, I can't show both the checklist and the PowerPoint. I have to choose one or the other. Comments stay there forever. So I can put in a comment here. I've created the plan and anybody that now pops back in here will be able to see that and notice that it's time and date stamped. So I love planner. I think it's a great way to um, uh, to manage lightweight projects and um, uh, across across multiple teams and groups. Now, if I go into my task, this breaks it down even further and just shows me my tasks that are due across all of my plans. So I'm primarily working on the Mark 8 project plan, but you can see here, here's my Mark 8 project plan. I've got event track, uh, project tracking and the event plan as well. So those are all the plans that I am um, actively involved in and it shows me kind of where I am. These are the things I haven't started yet. These are the things that are in progress. Okay. I'll we'll take a break here for just a second and see if there's any questions. Okay, good. So coming back, you'll see here, um, I just got this email here that I have been assigned a task. So anything that I get assigned is going to show up in my email and it's going to tell me. Um, it will tell me that uh, every day that I have tasks due. So I get a daily digest of everything that's coming over from Planner. And Microsoft Planner will also remind me when I have tasks that are late. So you'll, by default, that works out of the box, that's going to show up. Now, if you'll remember, when we were looking at to do, we saw these same items. So just remember these same items right here, these planned items are coming over from Planner that are in green. So you could literally work off of, if I create, if I check off this create project plan, it will check that item off in Microsoft Planner. If I checked it off in Planner, it would check it off in Microsoft To Do. So that kind of circular um, uh, um, completion, you don't have to go to multiple places. You can choose the window that works best for you to um, get that work done. And we have a question. Uh, Shelby says, do you get a notification if someone updates a task that you are also on? Um, by default, no. Now you can set a, a flow that says, hey, I want to get notified anytime um, a change is made or, or my task that I've assigned has been completed. Um, and, and I'll show, we're actually moving to that next. So excellent question. By, by default, no, you will not get notifications um, if somebody makes a change. Um, unless that has changed recently, but I don't believe that it has. Okay. All right, so now we're going to hop over to Teams. Thanks, Brendan. And we're going to bring it all together in Teams. So I'm going to hop over to Microsoft Teams. Um, and this is a familiar look that I'm sure you've all seen, Microsoft Teams. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is add the Planner app to your team. Now, I've recently added mine, but you just click that little ellipse, type in Planner, and then... Um, you'll have the option to add it. Just click the add. I've already done it, so you won't see it here. And then planner will always show up here um, in your left-hand bar, okay? So you want to add that planner plan in because especially when the unified experience lands in team for both task and plans, it will, um, uh, it, it'll already be there and you won't have to make any changes. This looks exactly the same way as planner does, if you'll remember. This is the My Task view in Teams. If we go to Planner, it's the same view. What's coming again is that unified experience. So I'm going to go back to my Mark 8 project plan, excuse me, project team. And you'll see here that I've actually added Planner, this plan, 
to the team. Okay, the way you'll do that is you just press this plus button and type in planner. You'll, you'll see this pop up and then you'll choose the plan that you want to add. So I could create a new plan or if I've got existing plans on this team, I could choose that. Now I've already got the project plan put in, but I've got multiple plans associated with this team that I could certainly add. Okay, so if you don't see that tab up there, you're just gonna press this plus button and add that item in. Now I can, again, work here just like normal. So if I click an item off, it's actually gonna click off in Planner, even though I'm inside Teams, okay? So what I do inside Teams, just to make my life a little bit easier, is, I've, is I'm using a handful of, of out-of-the-box flows or power automates. Daily, I have Flow Run that posts any tasks that are due tomorrow. So this will post out to the team, to the entire team, any tasks that are due uh, tomorrow. So this is just a flow that runs automatically. I'll, walk, I'll show you this real quickly. Um, this is a flow that says create a daily summary of planner task by buckets. Um, I'm sorry, that's the wrong, that's the wrong one. Post a daily message to Microsoft Teams with planner tasks that are due tomorrow. So this is one you can just go uh, automatically add into your environment. We'll send you the links on how to do that after the event is over. So I've got six flows that are running um, that I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through. So the first one is oftentimes you'll get messages that are coming to you either in a chat or in a team that you want to take action on. So let's go down here to design. And I've got this usability testing message here that I want to make sure I'm taking action on. If I just highlight the message, click this ellipse button here and go to more actions, you'll see I've got two items here that I've added, a personal task and a planner task. So this is an item that I want to take action on personally. So I'm going to hit create a personal task or add a personal task. It's going to pop up a window that says, what's the title? And I'm going to call this usability study. And what's my due date? I'm going to say this is due tomorrow, and I'm going to submit that. So now what's happened is back in to do, we go into Teams follow-ups. The flow is going to run. So I'll run, run over here to flow. And this is add a personal task. We're just waiting on this flow to run. Okay, the flow has run. And so what should happen here in just a bit is we're going to see that item show up here in this Teams follow-up. Hadn't showed up yet, it's not immediate, it does take a minute for it to run, but you'll see it show up here in this smart list. Now I've got a couple that have already shown up uh, from uh, uh, previous demo workflows. If I click the message, what I love here is that actually I've built the flow, or Microsoft's built the flow, to drop in the context of the message as well. So if I click this URL, it's going to open up Teams and actually highlight the message that I said I wanted to build the task off of. So it's this message right here. You can see it's highlighted in yellow. So it just reminds me contextually, hey, here's the message that I wanted to take action on. So in just a bit, again, that'll show up. Oh, it looks like it already has. There's my usability study. If I click this again, it's going to show up in my Teams message. And you'll see here, this message is highlighted. So that's an out of the box flow. You can turn that on. Uh, now flows are individual. So if you turn it on, it's only gonna work for you. Individuals need to turn their own flows on, okay? The other thing we can do is you could actually turn this into a planner task. So if I hit more actions, create a planner task, that same function is gonna pop up. Uh, and I'm going to say discuss, oops, discuss uh, use case with marketing. I'm going to put a due date of Friday on that. I'm going to hit submit. Flow is actually now going to run. And when I go to planner, that's going to show up. And I've also set it so it, it sends a little chat, which I'll, I'll show you here in just a second. So I'm going to go back to planner. That's the project plan. Discuss use case with marketing is showing up as no bucket. I want to drop that in the marketing bucket and let's go ahead and assign myself to it. Now you could, you could, um, sorry, you could 
get as complex as you wanted to with that adaptive card. So if I wanted to add context or add a, an option to assign it to a specific person, I could certainly do that. Um, that's how we do it in our in our production tenant. I'm not demoing that uh, today. Okay. Now the other thing that's nice about um, this model is that I've set it up so that every day, excuse me, anytime a task is is change this is back to the question that we had earlier that update lands in plant in uh, teams so i can see here that megan bowen uh finished up two tasks from planner yesterday if i actually click that it's going to open the task up in planner and it's actually going to log me out by accident it would actually open the individual task up that um Uh, I have I have signed myself out here. So give me just a second, folks. Get signed back in. Okay, great. So I could click this view task, but I'm not going to do it again for some reason. It's not liking in this demo tenant. Um, and actually see the task that Megan checked off. Okay. Um, I've also set up a flow because you could you could overcomplicate this pretty quickly. Um, uh, to post those into completed tasks inside channels. The last thing is I have set up a flow that sends me a daily email of all of the tasks. Sorry, my my uh, session got timed out here. Of all of the tasks by bucket to my email that that I am assigned to. So this is a this is a daily summary across all buckets inside a, a specific plan that actually shows me how are, how are we progressing. Again, you could get very complex with this. You could only show past due items. You could show items that are coming up in the next day. You could actually color code this as well. So if it's past due, it goes to red. So we've kind of walked through, we've walked through about four or five scenarios here on, on how to manage Task from a personal perspective, um, coming out of email, uh, coming out of Teams, and also out of Planner. We've met, we've walked through how to manage lightweight projects in Microsoft Planner, uh, how to assign those out to to individuals, how to manage those yourself, and we've also tied it all together with Microsoft Teams. I threw a lot at you today. You wouldn't necessarily use all of these. But hopefully this gets your your creative juices flowing on how could I make the tools that I'm already paying for work a little bit better for me. If you have specific questions, you could certainly reach out to a member of our team and we could help validate some of your ideas or, or thoughts um, uh, and, and just answer some, hey, is this possible kind of questions. We will make this uh, webinar available to you. So uh, if you have questions specifically, feel free. Um, uh, to um, uh, to come back and review this at a later date and ask ask those questions. And we'll also publish the links for all the flows that we used as well. So Brendan, do we have any other questions that um, I need to try to address? I know I'm coming up on the end of my time here. Uh, so far, it looks like nothing new has come in. Um, if there's anything specific that you would you know, like Reed to kind of talk through right now, something that you're just struggling with the best way to set it up. Um, now would be a good time for him to address that. If you think of it later, you can email uh, me. My email's in the, in the uh, Q&A thread and uh, we will get that answered for you. Perfect. Well, I hope this was a useful way, uh, useful way to spend your morning. I uh, hope you learned a couple of things. We'll make sure we get the the links to everything out uh, over email short shortly. If you have any specific questions that come up at a later date, certainly feel free to ask those.